Hey everyone, so the Montreal Canadiens take on the Florida Panthers tonight. They're coming off that, uh, I want to say, devastating loss to uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. It may turn out to be a devastating loss in the long run. We'll see. Um, Carey Price was not very good last night. Apparently, Charlie Lindgren's going to be in Nets tonight. So, I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm going to give you some stats for the game. I'm going to give you my keys to victory. And I'm going to give you my prediction for the game and who will be the first goal scorer. And that's right here at Talking Habs, where everything's dedicated to the Habs and all things hockey. Um, anyways, if you like videos, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe, ring the notifications bell. That's down there. That's going to get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge from Talking Habs. And while you're at it, you're on your way down there, you can give a thumbs up if you like the video. And leave me any comments you may have in the uh, about the game what you think the score will be, and I'd like to know who you think will get the first uh, Habs goal. That's our new thing here. Uh, I asked for the score, and who you think will be the Habs goal scorer. First one, anyway. And, um, yeah, I got lost there. Okay, so, um, Montreal is kind of desperate tonight. They need to win. Uh, if they lose tonight, it's can't, it's not going to be good. It's really not. Their chances for the playoffs are going to drop, I think, drastically. Um, let me give you some stats. So Montreal is 18, 14, and 6, and they're now 5th in the Atlantic. They went from 3rd to 5th after that loss. They are on the road. They're 10, 6, and 3. They're 9, 9, and 6 against the East. They've scored 125 goals and given up 122 goals. In their last 10, they are 6, 4, and 0. Oh. Florida is 19, 13, and 5. They played, I think, one game fewer than Montreal. Uh, they're third in the Atlantic. They took over uh, the Atlantic, uh, the third spot. Uh, they won last night 5-4 against Detroit. Uh, also, they scored four goals in a row. Like, they had the Tampa game against Detroit. At home, they're 12-7-2. and two. Against the East, they're 12-10-3. and three. They have scored 132 goals, four, and 32 goals, four, and they've given up 125 goals. They are also 6-4-0 in their last 10. Uh, goals per game. Montreal is at 3.24 goals per game, 11th in the league. Florida is 3.49 goals per game, 5th in the league, slight edge to Florida. Goals against per game, 3.18 for Montreal, 21st in the league. 3.30 for Florida, 27th in the league, slight edge to Montreal. Power play percentage, 23.2% for Montreal, 9th in the league. 24.3% for uh, Florida, fifth in the league, slight edge there. PK percentage, 75.4% for Montreal for 27th in the league, and 79.7% for uh, Florida for 20th in the league. So it's just a slight edge there. Not a great, um, not a great penalty kill, but better than Montreal's a little bit. Uh, new stat: shots per game. Montreal, uh, just because I wanted a stat where Montreal was first. Shots per game, 35.4 for Montreal, first in the league. 33.2 for Florida, ninth in the league. Um, shots against per game, 31.4 for Montreal, 14th in the league. And 31.9 for Florida, ninth in, 19th in the league. So just slight edges there for Montreal. I just wanted to put in a stat where, like I said, Montreal was first in the league, and that's shots per game. Uh, goal uh, point getters, I guess, uh, leading point getters on the team. Tatar, 15 goals, 18 assists, 33 points, a minus 2. Gallagher, 15 goals, 17 assists, 32 points, plus 7. Gallagher, second uh, on the, the team in points. That's that's a big, I mean, that's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? But who would have thought Galley would be second in uh, points? Um... Weber, 11 goals, 19 assists, 30 points, plus 12, and I think the plus 12 leads the team. In Nets tonight, I had written Price down here. Just I'm going to give you his stats just for the hell of it. 16, 12, and 3, 2, 9, 3 goals against, and a 904 save percentage with one shutout. He's the, 30, uh, the 43rd ranked goalie in the league. That's no good without, with not, with, okay, get your words out, Rick. It's not the end of the world here. Uh, with uh, those kind of numbers, Montreal's not going far. Let's put it that way. If he does, if those goalie numbers don't improve, 
And since Price is our number one goalie, his numbers have to improve. We can't win with a 43rd ranked goalie. We, and that's, um, you got to take into account, yes, yeah, some teams do do well with a goalie that's not number one, obviously. Uh, but we're missing that. We're missing a big piece on the left side of the defense. And we're missing a, a guy up front. We're missing an elite player up front. So with that kind of goal goaltending, we're not going to win. It's, it's just that simple. Charlie Lindgren is uh, listed as the starter, though, for tonight. He has no stats for this year. It'll be his first start. The funny thing about that is I get a lot of my stats from TSN website and uh in their game review they're listing keith kincaid as the starter i don't know where that came from i i made me go back on twitter and see if kincaid was called up but he wasn't so i guess it's lindgren and lindgren is listed they list him i sort of anyways lindgren i saw somewhere anyway that lindgren is the goalie and i don't know where they get kincaid i just thought that's a funny fact to give out so i don't know what's up with that Okay, on the other side, Jonathan Huberto, 14 goals, 35 assists, 49 points. See, we're missing a player with those kind of numbers. Plus 7 for him. Barkov, 11 goals, 31 assists, 42 points, plus 2. Yandel, Keith Yandel, defense, 4 goals, 26 assists, 30 points, plus 6. Um, I did hear that uh, Sergei Bobrovsky would be the starter tonight. His numbers are surprising. He's 13, 10, and 4. With a 3.20 goals against average and a .899 save percentage and one shutout. Now, same as with Price, with those numbers, Florida's not going to go anywhere. And unless Bobrovsky gets better, Florida's not going anywhere either. So, okay. So now, it comes down to, for me, here's the keys to victory for this game. Better goaltending. That's the biggest one right now. That's the damn biggest one is better goaltending. Can Charlie Lindgren provide that? I don't really think so. Can Caden Primo provide that? It's possibility for a little while until Carey Price gets his game back. I think Caden Primo might be able to do that. Um, I'm a little surprised they haven't called him up. I would think you call him up and you give him a few games. Maybe you give uh, Price, uh, he takes a week off. Basically, he's the, he backs up Primo. For the next three, four games. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing that. And I don't know what's going on. Maybe after, uh, is this the last game? No, the Carolina game is the last game in the road trip. So maybe when they get back here, you'll see more Primo. We'll see. I'm just a little surprised that Lindgren's getting the start. So better goaltending. No penalties. Penalties, they didn't last night. And I was surprised they killed the one penalty. Thank God they only had one penalty and they killed it off. Which is good. So hopefully, if they do take any tonight, they can kill it off. Not that uh, Florida has the best power play, but it's a good one at twenty-four point three, and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to face it if you don't have to. Here's another real big key: they need to play a sixty-minute game. There were times in the game yesterday where they they just totally broke down, and it seemed like they weren't there, uh, that they weren't thinking, they weren't focused. It was Price's problem last night. He wasn't focused. He wasn't tracking the puck well. And he seemed lazy on the rebounds and stuff. If we could chalk that off to an uh, chalk it up to an off night, maybe. But the point is, look at his numbers and the save percentage and um, the goals against average aren't good. And he needs to improve. So, yeah, they need to play a 60-minute game. I think that's my point on that one. <laughs> They have to tighten up defensively, especially if Lindgren's going to be in nets. They need to tighten up defensively. No two-on-ones, three-on-twos. They had a bunch of those again yesterday. Um, they were able to mostly catch up on them, but they they almost had clear two-on-ones. Two on they had a couple uh, three-on-twos, four-on-threes. I mean, they giving up odd man rushes. Got to stop that. Kulak needs to be better. He is the... Big problem right now on the defense is Brett Kulak. He's not holding his own, and he needs to be better, or they need to find somebody to plug into that second spot to play with Petrie. They need to find somebody who's going to play consistently good on the left side with Petrie. They have to be more aggressive in the neutral zone and the offensive zones, and that means better forechecking. 
than last night. They really, really need to be better in those two zones and play more aggressively. Like they did in the first period. The first period, that's what they were doing, and then it stopped. Now that's due to Tampa woke up, and, uh, you know, they decided, hey, we're not going to have any more of this. Yes, but they need to get to that. They need to play like that. doesn't matter who they're playing against. they got to play aggressively like that in the neutral zone and offensive zone. And obviously in their own zone, they got to get the puck out of there faster. They have to shut down their big guns. I mean, that's duh, of course. they got to shut down. But li literally, look at those Huber Huberto, who has good games usually against Montreal. Barkov, who has good games usually against Montreal. They need to shut those guys down. And here's a big thing for the defense. They need better gap control in the defensive zone. The gap control yesterday was not good. That's what led to a lot of those goals. They had they gave the Tampa uh, yeah, they gave the Tampa forwards a lot of space in their own zone, and it's not a good thing. So they gotta tighten up that gap control. And lastly and probably not important at all, but I thought I'd throw it in. Thoughts and prayers. We need to send our thoughts and prayers because it seems like everywhere something happens, everyone sends thoughts and prayers to make it better. So I'm thinking as a last resort, thoughts and prayers might make this better. Thoughts and prayers, everybody, to the Habs. Like that's going to work. Anyways, I thought I'd throw that in. So my prediction for the game. My prediction for this game tonight. It's tough. I... Um, I wrote down 4-3 for Florida. I really did. And then I read a few more previews and realized that Montreal, first of all, they beat them three games, uh, three times out of four last year. Um, if they can carry that into this year, it's the first meeting between Montreal and Florida. It might make a difference. Um, there was something else I can't remember what I read just before filming. But, uh, yeah, so Montreal, I'm going to go Montreal, 4-3 to three Montreal. They need this game. If they lose this game tonight, this could be like, again, like the, another losing streak. They need to stop this right away. They need this game. Can they with not without a um, a top price and with Lindgren? I don't know. I really don't know. First goal of the game for me is going to be Brendan Gallagher. So I'm calling Brendan Gallagher for the first goal. And there, that's my review, my preview. If you like to give a thumbs up, please. And please, any comments that you may have about the score, about who's going to be the first goal scorer, Anything you want to say in the comment section below, appreciate that. And while you're heading down there, subscribe, ring the notifications bell, and that's going to get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge from me at Talking Habs. So that's it. That's it for my review. Go Habs, go! I can't get that right. Go. I don't know. I'll come up with something new. Go Habs, go! And uh, let's hope this is a good game and we're not frustrated at the end. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you after. Oh, if you're still here watching, I'm going to be on the air at 7 o'clock. We're going to live stream the first period. So hopefully I'll see you all there. Bye, y'all. Have a great day. Enjoy the game.